Welcome back, folks. We're continuing Spike Timber, where we take the month of September and look at a bunch of Spike Lee movies. Now, we have come to the 2000s, an incredible era of movies. But, folks, we're not talking about one of those today. <laughs> I don't know why I picked some of these ones we've picked. Do the right thing. Of course, you got to talk about it. The most seminal work ever made by a filmmaker, maybe ever. It's amazing how that might be the greatest movie we've ever talked about on Movie Tales. And then the past two, Girl 6 and this one, may be some of the worst movies I've talked about. And we've talked about some stinkers. This is probably in my bottom five movies we've talked about on Movie Tales. And I think we've talked about like 118 movies. We're talking She Hate Me. This is a 2004 comedy drama from Spike Lee. He helped write it. We also have another credited screenwriter. One of the actors. Which actor was it? It's the one. Yeah, it's Michael Jeanette. He plays a character in here. Yeah, it's his brother, Jamal, he plays. What the fuck was this thing? This is an insane movie. Now, I came to this one, and the reason I wanted to talk about this one, because I knew it was streaming on Mubi. And I like Mubi little expensive, but I, I get what they're doing. And I hadn't seen it before. I heard nothing about this film. And let me tell you something about She Hate Me. If you have never heard a single thing about this film, and you watch it like I did going in completely blind, you are going to hate yourself afterwards, because you're just going to sit there like, how did this film get made why did it get made? And how is it a Spike Lee joint? It's crazy. The amount of topics we are covering in this thing is insane. And we don't do a good job of covering any of them. This is anti-George Bush, which is insane. Anti-capitalist, slightly homophobic, and in support of the mob? I don't know. It's very weird. A very peculiar exhibit. That much like last week's Girl 6, this could only exist in 2004. Like, it is such a reaction to the George Bush era. Just like, what are we letting Wall Street get away with? You know, like the venture capitalist and these companies rising up and talking about stuff. Why is Spike Lee talking about that, though? I don't get it. This movie's opening credits are like on a dollar bill and then like the face of George Bush is implanted on it. Long ass credits has nothing to do with the plot of this movie. I guess that's kind of cool. I want to try to break down the plot of this thing because it is truly insane. And things happen in here that you're just like, what are we doing with our lives? You're not going to walk away from this one feeling good. If anything, you're going to be surprised that you made it through the entire piece because it's two hours and 20 minutes, this marvelous masterpiece of a film. It's truly insane. So this movie stars Anthony Mackie, a young Anthony Mackie. He walks into a room, explains to a doctor that like the ultimate plan for a young guy to have is to get married and have kids by 31 because you, you're mature enough to figure everything out and then you're ready to like raise the kids or whatever. Anthony Mackie's playing a 30-year-old. I don't know how old Anthony Mackie is in real life. He looks really young in here. His character is John Armstrong. He works for this company, it's called like Progea, and essentially Progea is this huge company, they're producing or manufacturing this pill. The idea of this pill, I think it's like called Preximal or something like that, you take this pill, or whatever it is, I don't, it's just some like, you know, cure, it's a cure for HIV AIDS, they have found the cure for AIDS, and this company's going to sell it to you. Well, one of the doctors who works on this, he's like this German guy named Schiller. He doesn't want the like company to go public with this cure yet because it's not fully tested. So this movie opens up with him having a conversation with Anthony Mackie. And then Dr. Schiller jumps out a window and kills himself and kills other people along the way. That's how this starts. And I'm like, okay, I mean, 
So it's anti-capitalist, showing you like how the profits and gains you keep trying to live for, like hurt the little guy, that kind of dollar. Kind of. It's kind of about that. It is kind of about that. Then it turns out this company is evil, which who could have guessed? A mega conglomerate company who's like going to pay you to cure a disease is evil. Who would have known? Anthony Mackie finds out that there's some illegal stuff that the company's owner was doing, played by Woody Harrelson. We don't need to talk about him. He shows up in his Woody Harrelson just looking weird. So Mackie becomes a whistleblower, and I guess that connects to like another thing this wants to look. They make a weird analogy or connection to Watergate. We'll get to that in a minute here. Anthony Mackie's a whistleblower. He gets ousted from the company, and they like stop all his credit cards or whatever, so he can't use his cash. He's broke. He is fired. Nothing is working well for him. It's very very weird but i guess it's relatable like he goes to visit his parents and his dad whose name's geronimo i just want to throw that out there his name's geronimo why <laughs> i don't get it played by jim brown of course he, he does pretty good here you know for what he has to do he's like you're a lot like frank wills from watergate he was the security guard that found like the stuff and did the thing he's kind of been erased from history and then, like, learning about Frank Wills, played by just, like, Chidiwell Elgio 4 for some reason. He shows up in here. He does the first weird thing that this movie does, and that's, like, a random cutaway to something that doesn't matter or have any impact. So, we cut to the sequence from Watergate, and all the guys that find Frank Wills announce themselves and what they're going to get away with. Like, I did this, and then I went on to run this company, or I get to retire here and be a beautiful person who's happy. I'm like, okay, so, okay, okay, <laughs> this movie is kind of like, okay, the black man is going to be destroyed by corporations, they're not going to let a black man succeed in corporate America, they're always going to be put down even for doing the right thing, which is very much in line with Spike Lee's work, the black man cannot catch a break, the white man's going to put him down, Woody Harrelson is going to tell you, like, look how angry I am, don't make me angrier, but, like, okay, cool. That That's an idea, you know? Spike Lee doesn't like George Bush. I hear you. I understand. Okay? Like, I'm, I'm very much aware of what that is. I'm amazed we don't do a lot of, like, Iraq or stuff like that. We don't go into, like, that territory. That's what you think this movie's going to be about. Okay? Like, this guy is down on his luck. How's he going to, like, win the case? And we'll come back to the case. Don't worry. He does win in the end in terms of like getting Woody Harrelson arrested, but it has to go through him being arrested for like fraudulent stuff that they plant on him to him getting like the CD, the, the CD that is Schiller giving like the evidence of like what the company was doing to him going to like Washington, D.C. to testify at Congress, like the level of Congress to be like, this is really weird. Why is this company allowed to run like this? It's like Watergate. Like, I'm just a little man who's being put down or whatever. It's so weird. That could have been the whole movie, but we have two hours and 20 minutes to fill. So what is the middle chunk of this movie? This man needs money, okay? John Armstrong needs his money. He has a certain life and he wants to live, which is just like a nice looking house. <laughs> so how does he make his money? You might ask yourself this. Well, the moral quandary comes up to him in the form of his ex-girlfriend, played by Carrie Washington. She says, me and my girlfriend want to have children, but we are still in 2004 and lesbians can't be married or adoption is very hard. We are wealthy and successful. We would like you to impregnate us. Out of freaking nowhere, this movie becomes Anthony Mackie is like a gigolo you pay $10,000 to and he will impregnate a lesbian. And it happens very frequently. And I am very surprised <laughs> by that being a storyline in a movie. <laughs> it, it's, 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 it's terrible. It's terrible. What is it with Spike Lee not knowing how to handle women? I don't understand that. 
like you couldn't just say these are like high society women who want to like be single mothers it has to be they're lesbians there is too much heterosexual sex for this to for this to be about lesbian women we don't see like the women like engaging in anything explicitly with women every woman says they're lesbian has sex with anthony mackie it's very strange and it's i don't get it like i I, i'll give you the first one with carrie washington where she's like i i love you i actually love you and she wants to have like a weird triad family with like all the polyamory and stuff because she loves him and he can't accept that she's moved on to a woman blah 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 and her partner alex played by denaya ramirez is like i want to have a baby too i guess but i don't want you to be in me just give me your boys but that doesn't work so then she the only lesbian we haven't seen have sex with a man has to have sex with him and then she gets pregnant and <laughs> there's also like a weird subplot of like him having special sperm sorry that's just what it is there's like an entire subplot where his friend tries to donate sperm they're not as good as Anthony Mackie's. That sperm's going to become Captain America one day. It is, it's stupid. And then, so he gets a couple like grand from them. Then they start bringing in over more lesbians for him until he's done it like 18 or 19 times with various women. Don't worry though. We do see boobies and we do see the sex. Yeah. <laughs> Like, it is so stupid. Why do we have a montage from having sex with lesbians? I don't understand it. I thought this was about capitalism, man. Why is it about, like, weird sexuality stuff? Like, what does it mean to be a single mother? That hardly comes up because he signs, like, a like a, like an agreement that he has no parental rights towards these kids. But then it's, like, one big family at the end. Kumbaya, look at me and all, like, my kids. Because suddenly congress hears about it like the world hears about it because then the other plot line comes up look there's one thing i want to talk about we'll get to that in a minute here monica belusi she is like i am the daughter of a mobster john totoro i'm also gay so if you could just give me kids that'll make my dad happy and he'll stop telling me shit about being gay with my girlfriend so he does that Immediately upon the act of lovemaking, she is aware that, like, conception has happened. So she goes to her dad, and her dad's like, that's great. I'm glad, like, you had, a, like, a man impregnate you. But dad wants to meet this man. So out of nowhere, the mob shows up. They kidnap Anthony Mackie. He has to talk to John Totoro in a weird sequence where they're quoting the Godfather. And he's like, kids i don't know what to do with them you know you think they're gonna be straight turns out they're gay and you know whatever this is the last time we're gonna talk my daughter's happy aces what 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 is happening (laughs) it's it's insane it is an insane movie and it does have the moral quandary that has never been asked before is it morally right to have sex with lesbian women so they can be mothers you know that famous question we all ask ourselves I don't know what Spike's trying to say here. I don't know what anybody's trying to say here. It wants to play it as silly. It wants to play it as serious. I don't think any of the women are handled with respect or dignity. I don't think any character is handled with respect or dignity. Is it trying to be like a weird, like sexy comedy? Like you're doing a poor job at that. I think it's a comedy because the most egregious thing this movie does, and I don't even know if I'm going to show it in the video. You just have to go to Google Images, look up She Hate Me Sperm. Sperm. Put sperm at the end of that. Because there are fully animated scenes where Anthony Mackie's face is CGI'd over top of sperm. And you see all these sperm swimming towards an egg. And that happens more than once in the movie where we see that. Why do we see that? What a weird choice to put in this movie. Because the rest of it, look, you, you flash back to the Watergate stuff. Like the guys being, you know, unimpressed or whatever. All this stuff is in the real world. But then suddenly, I guess sperm's in the real world. You know what I mean. Suddenly... The most insane thing you've ever seen in your life comes on screen, literally, (laughs) and you're just like, what is this? 
what are we doing? <laughs> I don't think there's any like signature Spike Lee style to this film either. It looks flat as hell. The dialogue is terrible. Everyone looks bored. Aside from like some good music stings and a bunch of women like making fun of the way Anthony Mackie looks, there's nothing to it. That plot line wraps up with like him getting into like a thruple with his ex-girlfriend and her current girlfriend and they're going to raise their kids together. So I'm like, what? Also, there's a bunch of like scenes of people giving birth. I'm like, what are we saying here? What are we doing here? This isn't impressive. It's like, okay, you can film like a natural looking birth scene. Great. Let's cut back to the courtroom where we have to deal with like the progia stuff because this was about a man fighting the system, but then he just became a gigolo for a bit. And how does that make you look? We also have like a new sequence where once it gets out that like the daughter of like a crime boss got like impregnated by this guy for $10,000. Like we see news reels from all across the world. Of people like that's disgusting. I like that. I want to do that. It's like pick a side, man. Is it cool or is it weird what you're doing? Doing something doesn't make it either. You have to explain why we're doing it. And this is a lot of like, we're doing it. So just think for yourselves. Tell me, man. Do you think this is funny? Do you think this is cool? Do you like the idea of like gay women getting off with men? Is that anything to you? Is that anything to anybody? What is that? I cannot believe this exists. It's 20 years old. We would never make this again, and we never will. And that's for the best. Because this isn't normal, nor is it good. I cannot believe for the life of me. We've done three Spike Lee movies, and only one of them has been good so far. We're going to do Black Klansman next, which is one I do enjoy. So hopefully we can, we can get our numbers back up. Because She Hate Me is awful. And I don't recommend watching it. I guess if you hate George Bush, but that's not the plot of the movie. The plot of the movie is if you're a gay woman, you need a man to have a child because that's the only way it works in America. That and like the big man gets richer and the rich man gets bigger or whatever. <sighs> I'm done. I'm done. I can't keep doing it. Thank you all for watching this episode of Movie Tales. She hate me. My goodness. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. And of course, I will catch you in the next one. Have fun. Stay safe. Good luck.